What happens when a car design is so unique, so striking, that it leaves the public puzzled? In 1965, AMC launched the Marlin, a car with a fastback silhouette that defied convention. Some called it revolutionary, others a gamble. But what exactly went wrong with this bold move? The automotive world of the 1960s was one of excitement and change. The baby boomer generation was coming of age, and they wanted speed, style and power in their vehicles. This was the era of muscle cars and the rise of personal luxury coupes. Cars like the Ford Mustang, released in 1964, were becoming cultural icons, offering sporty designs at affordable prices. General Motors was dominating the market with stylish cars that appealed to a wide range of consumers. Amidst this landscape, AMC, American Motors Corporation, known for its more conservative and practical vehicles, decided it was time to take a risk. Enter the AMC Marlin. Unveiled in 1965, the Marlin aimed to be different. With a distinctive fastback design, it was AMC's answer to the growing trend of sporty, personal cars. But the Marlin wasn't just about style. It was marketed as a car that could offer both sporty handling and comfort for long road trips. The Marlin featured a sloping roof line that stretched from the windshield to the rear bumper, giving it a unique profile that set it apart from other cars of the time. The Marlin wasn't just a facelift of an existing model either. It was designed to be a statement piece. So, why didn't this daring design take off the way AMC hoped? AMC was a smaller player in the automotive industry, competing against giants like Ford, General Motors and Chrysler. They had always focused on value and practicality, but with the Marlin, AMC wanted to show they could do more than just compete in the family car market. They wanted to prove they could make a bold, stylish car that would appeal to the younger, trendier buyer. To achieve this, AMC's marketing team framed the Marlin as a personal luxury car with performance. Ads from the era highlighted its spacious interior, making the claim that it had room for six passengers, thanks to its wider body based on the AMC Rambler Classic platform. In fact, the Marlin was longer and wider than most of its fastback rivals, like the Mustang and Dodge Charger. It had impressive features for the time, such as power brakes, power steering, and a more luxurious interior than AMC's usual fare, with leather and wood accents. The engine options were respectable too. Buyers could opt for a straight six engine or a more powerful V8 with up to 270 horsepower. On paper, the Marlin had all the ingredients to be a hit. It combined sporty looks with practical family features, something no other manufacturer was offering quite in the same way. However, while the marketing emphasized the car's versatility, it also highlighted its biggest flaw. It couldn't excel in any one area. Consumers were confused about what the Marlin actually was. Was it a muscle car? Was it a luxury vehicle? For younger buyers who wanted performance and speed, the Marlin's Zero, 60 time of around 10 seconds, fell short of the fast, aggressive feel they craved. Meanwhile, for families looking for comfort and space, the rear seat's headroom, despite the wide-bodied claim, was compromised by the sloping roof line. And then there was the competition, the Marlin was up against cars like the Mustang, which was lighter, more affordable, and embraced a clearer identity as a fun, stylish, yet practical car for younger drivers. On the other hand, luxury buyers could easily turn to the Cadillac or Buick lines for larger, more comfortable vehicles. The Marlin found itself stuck between categories. Despite these challenges, AMC forged ahead. They made changes to the Marlin in 1966 refining the design by lengthening the car and giving it more presence on the road. Yet, sales continued to decline. Was it too late? By the late 1960s, AMC's troubles were becoming more evident. While the Marlin started strong with nearly 10,000 units sold in its first year, by 1967, the final production year, sales had plummeted to around 2,500 units. The fastback design, once considered futuristic, now seemed out of touch with the market's desires. Buyers wanted either high-performance muscle cars or fully-fledged luxury cruisers. 
the marlin, attempting to straddle both worlds, couldn't find a foothold in either. Consumer feedback suggested that the marlin's size was an issue. Despite being marketed as a sporty vehicle, its weight and bulk made it feel less nimble than competitors. Additionally, while AMC tried to offer a diverse engine lineup, the base models felt underpowered, especially when compared to the Mustang's high-performance options. The public wasn't buying into the car's dual identity, and neither were AMC dealers, many of whom struggled to sell the car. Another blow came from within AMC itself. The company was experiencing financial struggles, and internal resources were stretched thin. In a bid to focus on more mainstream, high-volume cars like the Rambler and Ambassador, AMC made the decision to phase out the Marlin after only three years on the market. By the end of 1967, the Marlin was discontinued. With the Marlin's discontinuation, the fastback design that AMC had once championed fell by the wayside. But was the Marlin truly a failure? In the years since its production ended, automotive historians and collectors have debated its legacy. Some argue that the Marlin was ahead of its time, foreshadowing the blend of sport and luxury that would become popular in later decades. Others see it as a lesson in how important it is for a car to have a clear market position. Today, the Marlin is a rare find at car shows and among collectors, with its distinctive design making it a standout. Despite its commercial struggles, the Marlin is appreciated for its daring attempt to push the boundaries of what a mid-sized car could be. The Marlin's impact on AMC, however, was not so easily dismissed. AMC's next major attempt at shaking up the industry came with the introduction of the AMX and Javelin in the late 1960s, two cars that had a clearer focus on performance and style, learning from the Marlin's confused messaging. Both cars became more successful, showing that AMC had learned the importance of defining what their vehicles were meant to offer. The AMC Marlin may not have been a runaway success, but it represents an important moment in automotive history. It was a car that aimed to be something different, something bold. In many ways, the Marlin was a victim of timing, too unusual for a market that wanted clearly defined categories. Yet its unique design continues to spark discussions among car enthusiasts today. The Marlin story is one of risk-taking in the automotive world, a reminder that innovation can sometimes be misunderstood in its own time. Looking back, it's easy to see where the Marlin went wrong. But could AMC have made it work with a few tweaks, or was it always destined to be an outlier? So, what do you think? Was the AMC Marlin simply a misunderstood masterpiece, or was it destined for failure from the start? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, do like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like this.